Good afternoon, and thanks for inviting me. So I've been given this challenge to present to you how I believe cuisine will be in the future. But before I deal with this, I want to introduce you to Pau Egrenos. He's a Catalan journalist, and he was the person who defined contemporary cuisine by giving it this name, Technical Emotional Cuisine, Techno Emotional Cuisine. He, with his cooking for brave people, developed a map with everything, all the most major milestones that had taken place in cuisine up until that point, and those people who had had a key role in evolving cuisine up until that point. So what is techno-emotional cuisine? Basically, it's contemporary cuisine, which has, to a certain extent, evolved. There's a great deal of technique and knowledge in this field, but it has a vocation at the same time. It has to stimulate and excite people so that they have a unique experience. All the most important chefs in the world today, those who are awake or giving rise to a great deal of interest in this area are already experimenting in techno-emotional cuisine. But let's go back to this term, techno-emotional cuisine. All the chefs in the 1980s, which in their own way generated change and were revolutionary, were very innovative and created something with a great deal of value. They not only were sowing the seeds for techno-emotional cuisine, but in their own way were actually practicing this kind of techno-emotional cuisine in the same way that their predecessors were as well. Because in the history of cooking, there have been several points in time where a new concept has emerged. So let's go back to the question, what will fine dining of the future be like? What will haute cuisine of the future be like? In order to answer this question, I'd like to present three key ideas. The first idea is when we try and project into the future, think about a future idea, we do that from our current perspective using disruptive technologies, we see that in the future, and we also take into account our culture, our own prejudices, but we mustn't forget that our brains are a machine which are designed to anticipate the future. It receives information through our senses. It establishes hypotheses and then tries to select the best one because in many cases it's a survival strategy. That is the main function of our brains in any case. To live means to adapt and anticipation is the best possible adaptation strategy. This has always been the case because brains are capable of designing virtual spaces, things that haven't yet happened. I can cook in my mind, I can create flavors in my mind, but at the same time I can also generate emotion virtually and there are people who perhaps find themselves in very difficult situations because of their imagination, because of a sense of panic, for example. But if the mind is focused, then we can begin to create. When we try and anticipate, there are always a number of factors that come into play and they will condition our vision of the future. For example, a hundred years ago, more or less, it was thought that cuisine in the year 2000 would be based in pills, would be eating meals in pill form. And that was because people were already thinking that something which we now know as vitamins existed. This wasn't discovered until the beginning of the 20th century. When a disruptive technology like electricity is discovered, it not only was thought that the future would involve using electricity, electricity for lighting and heating. It was also thought at the time that electricity would be used for growing plants and vegetables and for absorbing nitrogen in the air. These were disruptive technologies which at the time were considered very important. Here are some prints that can be found in the National Library in Paris. They are prints from the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, and this is how people perceived the future. 
It seems here that everyone would fly, firefighters would fly, rescues would take place from the air, there would be helicopters, there would be an electric train, obviously, which would go from Paris to Beijing. Skates with motors, cars. I particularly like this one here because these are international or intercontinental trips that are depicted here. So how could anyone have thought of that back at the time in the 19th century? Well, this the Zeppelin, it's what was in someone's mind at that time. And also a mechanized or, uh, world with robots, uh, robot hairdressers, robot tailors. Kitchens would be like laboratories with uh, different handles and devices and mechanisms using steam and hydraulics, and food would be in pill format. But how would we dress? Ask yourself that question. Well, in the same way as people dressed in the 1900s, because our imagination limits us in that way. This is an idea that has been passed on through time. At the point, cartoons in the newspapers depicting people eating meals in pill format. Here we can see that the character is saying, this is the second time this week, it's taken me four minutes to eat a meal, as if saying that's a really long time. De los, uh, en Paris, se Mar, Mar Urlaski. Urlaski, which was one of the main food critics in Él Paris at the time, was uh, outraged because in the cafes and restaurants in Paris, and at least some of them, there were signs saying that here you can eat quickly and well. Decía, es and he no said that that is, uh, makes no sense whatsoever. You can't eat quickly and well. You either eat well or you eat quickly. Time does not respect any activity that uh, is carried out without that being taken into consideration. Gracias, María. <laughs> bueno, evidentemente esto que se socializa acaba so, once en this is uh, popularized, this idea, you can find it in Hollywood. Here we can see a character who's struck by lightning. He arrives 80, in Manhattan in the 1980s, where children come out of vending machines, where flying ships have replaced cars, and also this idea of eating Pero meals bueno, in pill form ha is seen once again. But there have always been people who object to this concept or who have been more intelligent. Not everyone in the industry thought that food would be in pill format. Filippo Tommaso Marinetti was an Italian poet and was part of the Futurist movement. He was born in Italy and he travelled to the UK and to France and he wanted to change society, he wanted to change the world and he presented a future in which human beings would develop, they would develop their capabilities. In 1930, he presented this manifesto for future cuisine where he would present very very interesting ideas that food would change through society. This is the interesting bit. From 1930, 1933 onwards, the first meal taking into account this futurist movement was created. And there were very sophisticated dishes who, or which uh, embodied the entire philosophy. This is a philosophy which is quite interesting because more than this is something that came about more than 80 years ago, but it's still very much present in haute cuisine. It involves originality in meals. The context is as important as the meal itself. Sensory stimulation is also a key aspect. The context is important. That's why you can't talk about politics or football while you're eating. 
de sensorial a través de senses need to be stimulated through touch. Es increíble porque todo this is incredible because all of this elementos tremendamente All of these elements are very contemporary, very modern, which are very much present in pioneering cuisine today, but this is something that was anticipated already in the 80s. El tema de avanzar o prever el futuro es una constante. This idea constante. of predicting the future is something that we've seen eh, evidentemente, eh, constantly. Insisto, las más and I have to insist that the most disruptive no sé technologies and ideas are always envisaged for the future. Futuro iba a estar de plantas, In future, grasa, it was envisaged that carne, plants would be mixed with meats, eh, or there would be flat, fat plants, there would uh, nuclear energy, for example, was something that would also affect agriculture and to grow huge vegetables. It wasn't considered something negative at the time. The concept of factory farming and food associated with factories wasn't perceived negatively, and this is something that was developed throughout the 20th century. We would use robots, we would colonize the desert, and we would use all of this technology to develop a world which was had an incredibly futuristic perspective. In 2013, farmers, as uh, we know them today, would be in museums according to those who presented these ideas last century. Michael Pollan is an important uh, journalist who's written a number of articles in publications, and he described how in the 60s, when he was younger, the space race also generated a climate which would uh, already make people predisposed to this new kind of cuisine. It was very much focused on synthetic foods, synthetic uh, juices which would uh, dominate and would overcome nature. The future would be synthetic and would surpass nature, which is associated with risks and harm. All these projects are very far from how the future has actually panned out. And there are quite a number of interesting examples. This book by Barbara Ford talks about the food of the present and how perhaps um, there is a possibility that we would be eating insects. A few weeks ago, the the UN Food Organization said that, uh, stated that in the future this was a real possibility. But these are visionaries. For example, this journalist says that there's uh, no food that would be, food is going to be more local because it makes no sense that uh, products come from much further afield. And the second idea is that in many cases, techniques and technologies are used to keep us doing the same things over and over again, sometimes faster and sometimes better. What's this? It's a postcard from 1912. This was written by the first pastry chef of this hotel that we can see up on the screen, which was inaugurated in 1912. And he wrote a postcard to his friend who was working in a pastry shop in a wonderful city where the royal family spend their summers. That's actually where I'm from, and you're all invited. So from 1912, in this 101 years that have passed, how many things have changed in this hotel, for example? Think about the following. The society has changed. The kind of stay we have at a hotel, how we use certain objects. But in practical terms, technology is the same. Before, we would open doors with keys, now we use cards. So there has been progress, but basically the operation that takes place is the same. In 1912, 
Porque las mujeres uh, tenían vestidos muy largos y había que women had very long dresses which needed to be hung up. Nowadays, la forma que tenemos de vestir. Wardrobes are las cocinas, smaller because they've adapted to the way that we dress. So in the case cambios? of our pastry chef, what was his kitchen sí. like? And have ha there been major cambios? changes to ha the kitchens we have now? Well, obviously, yes. Limpias, kitchens are now cleaner. You want to work in them. Materials that we use are different. But as Herbetis says, who's one of the major culinary scientists in the world, objectively from the Middle Ages, with the exception of the microwave, there haven't really been any major technological incorporations or tools in the kitchen. Before, we would use ovens, uh, wood fire ovens, now they're electric. Now we use induction heat rather than a direct flame or an open flame. Before, perhaps, spoons were made of wood and now they're made of plastic or silicon. But we use them for the same functions. And the third idea is as follows. Cooking is a reflection of society. This is perhaps the most important idea of all. Just one quick question, actually. Just to highlight the previous idea. What technology in the 15th century was so disruptive that it changed the world of cooking? No, ya había fuego, ya había fuego. There was there was already fire at that fuego. point. No. Pensar un poco. No, think think hard. Think a little eh, bit about this. El tenedor? The fork? Sí. Venga, un poco de imaginación. Come on, use your imagination. La nevera? A fridge? No. Ah. ¿Qué tecnología What disruptiva? Disruptive. Pioneering technology changed the world of cooking. Was it a strainer? Un colador? Vale, os lo digo yo. I'll tell you. I'll put you out of your misery. Os lo digo, os lo digo. La imprenta. I'll tell you, it was printing. La imprenta. The printing press. La imprenta consigue. The printing press. Co eh, made it possible to spread all the culinary, culinary knowledge Atención. we have. No tiene nada que ver con la it has nothing to do with the kitchen, obviously. Fijaros, no tiene nada que ver con Which la is interesting. Un cuchillo, un colador, Everyone's thinking perhaps eh, about patatas, knives, vapor, potatoes, ser, fire, ser, steam, ser, what can it be? But no, it's a printing press. It's a concept. Concepts vale. are disrupting, they're pioneering. Las, uh, La cocina es un reflejo de la sociedad. So cooking is a reflection of society. Polieno, que es un escritor, Polienus, un who griego, was a Greek philosopher, comenta en uno de sus escritos, wrote que, in his que cuando uh, work that when en el palacio real Charles Persa, the Great entered, or when Alexander the Great entered a Persian palace, una cosa tan suntuosa y tan elegante, and saw such a sumptuous and elegant setting. No me extraña que estos hayan perdido la guerra. He thought to himself, I'm not surprised that the Persians lost the war. Los eh, persas eran gente muy sensible hacia las artes, hacia la cultura, y entre ellas la gastronomía. Very aware of gastronomy. Los griegos durante una etapa muy grande, and the Greeks for a very long time would uh, show off about the fact that they were very austere and very frugal. They thought of themselves as a very strong people, not in the later part or the, the latter part of Greek times where they were more focused on the arts. But how was Rome? There was only one. It wasn't only one room, there were different kinds of uh, Rome. There was uh, agriculture. And each of these peoples had, or these sectors, had their own cuisine because it would be, the, the society and their beliefs would be reflected through their cooking. 
¿Y cómo es la comida de la Edad Media? So what was uh, cooking like in the la Middle Ages? Ages? The Middle Ages started in the 5th century up until the 15th century. And it reflected Porque society hecho, at the time. Los avances se dan solamente because en los monasterios. Porque ¿cómo es un progress only really took place in monasteries because what se kind of lives do monks have? They make cheeses, una, they are very devout. And in the Middle Ages, there's significant steps backwards. So let's move forward now to the Renaissance. Medici, and in the Renaissance, the Medicis um, were very prominent. Florence was an incredible city which was exploding with art. Hay un florecimiento de todas las artes y por Art supuesto, general, como no podía ser de otra manera, and, de la gastronomía. Uh, gastronomía de la also comer. followed suit. The way we eat y also flourished in the 17th century. How, what, what was the 17th century like Suntuoso, for food? It was very sumptuous. De acuerdo, osado. It se was very así, bold. Se comía así. Fijaros que incluso, and that's how people ate. Bueno, ya que estamos refinados, and uh, since they were very mousse, refined, mousse porque, was actually invented at that time because it was a way of avoiding that very uh, ugly action of having to chew. Bien. ¿Y cómo es el siglo XX? Perdón, so what was the 18th century like? Pues es un siglo the 18th century was a very it was a century that was uh, marked by progress. Y la es igual. And es una this is also que busca, true es una in culinary terms. Que busca the el cuisine at the time was being revolutionized and the knowledge at the time was cuisine. being expanded. Nouvelle cuisine 1972 began in 1972. ¿Qué pasa aquí? And what occurred? Here, there was a disruptive, a pioneering movement. And for the first time in history, chefs were no longer skilled craftsmen, but rather men who translated their handiwork into something intellectual. There was a real revolution. Do you think that revolution would have been possible si no un mayo del 68? if there hadn't been a May 1968? Michel Gerard was almost killed se le because he salada, decided to add foie gras to a salad. Se que el era una cosa que because al foie gras. it was understood at that time that vinegar would attack ellos, the flavor of foie gras. Ellos de un mundo muy so they came from a world which was very conservative y and cambian, they cambian changed the entire landscape. Insisto, yo hago un paralelismo con mayo del 68. I have to insist that I'm 68, making this comparison with May 1968 because it was the revolutionary time in the world of cooking. So just one quick question. Si me planteáis, ¿cómo será la if you were to ask me futuro, what will haute cuisine be like in the future, y si yo os he dicho, and if I've said to you que la that es un reflejo de la sociedad, cooking is a reflection of society, decirme, ¿cómo va a ser then la sociedad tell me what, y os diré lo que van a comer. if you tell me what the future society will be like, then I will tell you what it will be eating. Pero como no así, but since I don't want to end on that note, I'm going to try something different. What will society be like in the future? 9, de personas 9 billion planeta, inhabitants on the planet, 70% of the population will be living in big cities. En el año 2050, in 2050, there will be 400 cities with more than 10 million inhabitants. Eh, Gente con más esperanza de vida. People will be living longer. Este es el, eh, el futuro que nos, and this is the future that uh, is going to happen. Ciudades muy complejas. Cities will be very con complex. Un punto, un punto, and yo creo que I think con lo que ha sido el ¿no? we Las ciudades se convertirán we'll go en back to estado, the Renaissance. ¿no? Cities will become states in Son themselves. Todas y todas They'll distintas. all be similar Bien. but different. Si tenemos este mapa, if we look at this map, Básicamente, una hipótesis de futuro podría ser esta. a hypothesis for the future could be as Tenemos, follows. Por un lado, 
We have on the one hand the world of ideas, of identity, an individual world. We have the world of markets, which is also exerting a certain pressure. We have the world of technology, which will also be very important as new technologies emerge. And concepts like this one. This is a social conquest. There'll be social responsibility, sustainability, clarity when it comes to companies presenting their intentions and their ideas. And this is something that we'll definitely see in the future. There'll also be a great deal of pressure from emerging cultures. They no longer want to be marginalized. They want to have a leading role and they want to be proud of what they stand for. And there'll be a very important concept which is here and now. Here and now. These are people with a nomadic urban lifestyle who want to eat, they want to be socially responsible, they don't want to give up anything, they want the world to adapt to them, and technology will be very important. Today, we know that we've, had, that we've made a distinction between developing countries who have produced for developing countries, and in the future, the emerging countries will be developing for the new emerging countries. So food will be an important axis in this relationship. It always has been in the past and it will be in the future. When I started catering school, I remember that people would say that a, chef or a doctor's work is to look after people's health and the chef's work is to ruin people's health. But this has obviously changed because health is a very important factor in what we do now. This is an important pillar because people don't want to sacrifice the sensory experience, but they don't want to sacrifice what they are either. So in the future, these individual feelings, this connection as part of a group will also be very important. So that's basically the future as I envisage it. This is my hypothesis. But there's just one idea, one key idea that I'd like to present to you. At the end of the day, we, can't, we mustn't forget that the future will be however we want it to be. And together, we will build that future starting from the present. Thank you.